Well, good evening everyone. Um, right behind me is Portsmouth. I'm on the ferry over to uh, Caen in Normandy and then it's uh, just over 500 miles drive down to the ski resorts. Um, done this one before um, but a few things have changed in charge of locations and stuff so we thought we'd film it again. Anyway, um, thanks for tuning in and hope you enjoyed the video. Morning everyone. Um, we were on the upper car deck of the ferry last night. It's very slow to disembark and uh, that's put us at the back of the line for border controls here going into France. Um, so it's been a little while, um, but uh, we'll be through soon and on our way. Uh, the strategy looks like four stops according to this. I'm going to change one of them to an Ionity station and um, the last one's only four minutes just to get us into the resort with uh, ample charge. Uh, but I know I can charge a resort, so we might skip that one, do it in three, but I think we'll do this in about four stops. Um, we're now using the new Audi charge card, which is powered by Eli, um, and users of any car can uh, get Eli. So uh, this should work out quite well. Uh, first stop's about 90 miles away. We disembarked with about three quarters of a battery, and we should be on our way shortly. Well, uh, first stop, uh, we've done about 90 miles from the port. This is uh, a new Ionity at uh, Val de Roy, and um, those two on the end aren't working, but as you can see, there's a lot of chargers here, so it was no problem to plug in and, uh, and top up. So uh, good choices of where to stop next. I could do a big charge and go to Ionity La Reserve. I could do a lesser charge and go to Ionity Nemours. Um, Ionity used to charge by the minute in terms of their costing. Now it's per kilowatt hour, a bit like um, we used to back in the UK. So it doesn't really matter if I hang on and slow a little bit, uh, charge a bit slower than I otherwise would. Um, it's all working out okay so far. Uh, paying for it, I now have the new Audi charging service and uh, that just activated the charger. And then I'm getting this at discounted rate, a bit of it, instead of paying about uh, 0.69 euro to the uh, kilowatt hour, I'm down at sort of 0.35 brings it down to about 31p a kilowatt hour, which is very similar to the UK pricing at the moment and not that different to uh, the price cap home energy costs either. So not too expensive to do this and uh, we'll be on our way fairly soon. Do need a coffee and as you can see, this is not bad for facilities. Lunchtime, there's a couple of restaurants around the corner that you can get the kind of classic French plat du jour. Uh, but in terms of somewhere for coffee and a croissant or a breakfast kind of thing, really isn't much choice going on here. Um, bizarrely, this place seems really popular with race walkers. We've had two or three race walkers going past just while we've been charging up. But we're going to be back on our way very soon and uh, we'll work out the next stop, which might just be a coffee stop. It might be a charging stop. So we've come up a plan now. Instead of going to reserve, we're going to go to Nemours next. That's about 120 miles away. Car charge is slowing down. It's at um, 83% now. It's just dropped down about 100 kilowatts. So I'm going to unplug and we're going to um, just probably pull in for a coffee somewhere and then carry on down to Nemours. So, grab some takeaway coffee and croissants um, just to the services, use the loos, and we're going to carry on down to the next Ionity. But as you can see here, there's a massive fastnet station going in. Um, so it's going to make life a little bit easier in future. The French are certainly investing in their infrastructure in a way that uh, we're not really seeing as much back at home. Okay, we're just coming up on... Um, the Nemours service area. Uh, we're not going to use that one um, because I can push on to La Reserve and get down there. I'll only have about 15 or 16 miles range remaining, uh, but we can do that without a problem. So, so far, we have done over 200 miles. We've done one 25 minute charging stop. Um, I'm ignoring the sound out here because he wants to stop me at that charger and uh, we'll carry on down. But another uh, 30 odd miles to go and then we we're going to do a, a big recharge and then I think it'll be one more stop at an Ionity and then a, a five or ten minute top up before we drive up the mountain to the village. So keep it with the four stop strategy, it seems to be working all right. Um, what is amazing is the number of uh, service areas that I go past and I can see great big hubs of eight rapid chargers all gone in, all with canopies over. Um, really, really good infrastructure going in here, which is making getting around on the motorway network so much easier than at home. Um, it's such a shame that we're often stuck with just a pair of grid serve chargers, when really what you need on the fast open roads is these big banks of, of eight fast chargers or rapid chargers. 
uh, so everyone can get a quick top up um, at the services where there are lots of facilities while your car's charging and make our way. All right, this is uh, La Reserve. I'm just picking up, there you go, a little electric mouse sign. So down here, there should be some chargers. Uh, we're gonna use the services. I think this one's gonna be a full charge, um, probably up to, well, close to 100%, um, because by the time we bought a sandwich and eaten it, so in the sunshine, the car will be charged up. So uh, there is the Ionity, so I just gotta go around the loop to access them. Um, so I reckon we'll be about half an hour here. Looks like it's very quiet, which is good news for us. And um, nice to be using our time uh, for lunch whilst charging the car, unlike earlier when we, we had to charge up, there were no facilities around suitable for us, and then we had to do another stop for coffee. So uh, this isn't really impacting on the overall journey time. So the first charge was about 25 minutes. Uh, this one might be a little bit longer. We're down at about 6% battery. And when we stop, we, uh, when we get going again, um, we'll probably be up at 100%. So this is gonna be about 30 minutes. All right, here we go, lunchtime. I was wondering how we are um, sorting out skis, etc. We've got a ski rack going all the way along to the back. So we've got skis poking out of a drop down seat, which is useful. So we filled up um, second stop at uh, Ionity La Reserve. Uh, that was um, a while back now, because um, we're just coming up to our third charging stop. Uh, we're coming into uh, Masson uh, Saint Aubain, and uh, we're gonna top up there. So uh, we were 33 minutes charging at La Reserve, took the car up to 92%. It showed about 163 miles of range when we pulled out of the services. This one was 150 down the road. Uh, but just by slowing down from 130k to 125 in a few places, it's built up a margin. I'm going to pull in there with about 22 miles of range remaining. And uh, from there, uh, we can top up. Um, it's only 132 miles from this services coming up to where we're going in Beijing. So it'd be quite easy to do a big charge and get up to Beijing uh, with 10 or 20% of battery remaining. Um, what I'm actually gonna do is only top the car up to about 80%, so I stick with a fast charging 150 kilowatts. Um, so before the charging rate slows down, I'll then leave those chargers. Just before we leave the motorway after Geneva to head up to Leger, there's one more service called uh, Bourneville with Ionity. We'll stop in there, we will charge for about seven or eight minutes at 150 kilowatts and then that'll get me up to Leger with at least quarter of a battery that'll get me back down to Bonneville uh, but if I use the car in the resort um, there are a couple of free charges around a couple of ski lifts so that'll give us a chance to top up our battery so uh, yeah we could do this thing in three stops um, but I'm going to do one last top up to give me a bit of space in the resort and uh, do a fourth stop which is only going to be a really short one so it's working out so far uh, so well. Um, the bit of motorway I'm on uh, is now joined by the motorway coming down from the Eurotunnel. So far more British cars on the road. Uh, but in terms of traffic, apart from a 10 minute traffic jam outside Paris and me getting the, uh, the tunnels around Versailles wrong, um, which I've done many a time, uh, getting the wrong half of them, uh, it's worked out pretty well so far. So we are well on our way. Um, so pulling in in a couple of minutes for one last charge and then uh, splash and dash before we head up the hill. So successful trip in the end. Um, first charge, as you know, up to about 80%, 25 minutes. Second charge, full up to um, 100% and that took about 33 minutes for us. And then the last charge, again, that was back up to 80% and that took about 25 minutes. So all in, um, just a few minutes under an hour and a half of charging, three stops. We didn't stop at Belleville like I planned. Uh, we pulled into the Ionity station there to find about five British electric cars all charging up before they headed up to the mountains. Some of them carrying on to three valleys rather than here at uh, Leger. Um, so I arrived with not much charge, uh, probably about 20 miles range. With the temperature drop overnight, it said 15. Um, but round to ski lift, as you can see, we're plugged in. We're uh, using the Shuko Domestic 16 amp plug, um, converted to Commando um, Industrial and uh, that's given me 3.3 or 3.6 kilowatts while I've been skiing all day. So topping up, um, there's more free chargers in town and uh, we've had a grand day out. So a successful trip down. 
Uh, the only downside was about an hour of heavy traffic coming past Geneva, but it was, you know, Saturday off a half term um, in French school holidays, so it's always going to be busy on the traffic. So halfway through our little break down here in Leger, um, as you know, I topped up at Perrier car park using the domestic socket uh, for day skiing. That put about 30% into my battery, which I've been using running around between ski lifts and, and shops and stuff. Um, I am now um, plugged in here. So I'm getting 11 kilowatts off this one. It might even be a 22 kilowatt three phase charger. Um, but the good news is I've charged up while I've been skiing all day. This is completely free. And now I've got enough for my return journey uh, to the first plant charging stop. So this is what we actually did. Uh, next time through, um, I think I'll skip on Val de Roy. Uh, now that Fastnet has opened up at Rosny South, I'd use that one instead. Uh, but the La Reserve and Masson, that worked out really well for us. If we hadn't had the traffic jam, we might have got to uh, Bonneville with less charge. Um, I was driving slowly because of the heavy traffic. Um, There's a bit of a traffic jam there. So maybe a top up at Bonneville would have been required. And if you're going into a resort that's a little bit further into the mountains, or sort of deeper into the mountains uh, than uh, Leger, uh, you might need a top up there as well. But there are plenty of options on the way down, not just with Ionity, uh, but with plenty of other uh, charging hubs. Um, I've just seen so many kind of total hubs, fast net hubs. It is really, really easy. The infrastructure in France is brilliant. Um, it does make traveling across France on the motorways very, very simple in an electric car. A friend of mine did a journey the same week. He was uh, starting out in Brighton, went through the tunnel and went down to Morsey next door. I met him on the mountains. He used a Tesla Model 3 long range. He did that in four stops, all superchargers. And uh, one of them was just a coffee stop and uh, there just happened to be superchargers there. So he said he could have comfortably done it in three. Another friend of mine lives near me uh, outside Bournemouth. He used a Peugeot 3008 plug-in hybrid. Uh, did it all in one uh, long slog through the tunnel, uh, which is a hell of a drive. Uh, but he had to stop for petrol twice and um, some heavy queues for the petrol stations because it was such a busy weekend for travel. So at one of them, he pulled in and he was about half an hour waiting to get to the petrol pump with a 10 minute, 10 car queue in front of him. So, uh, you know, with only a small tank, he really didn't have a lot of options. So he had to stop there. So I reckon his refueling time wasn't significantly different to uh, the recharging time for both my myself and my friend were using the Tesla. So just setting up for a return journey, we're going to stay in a hotel in uh, Arras and then go through the tunnel tomorrow morning. Uh, so as you can see there, it's just put a little charging plan together. So the first one, Ionity, looks great. I know there's an Ionity at Troy, uh, but that one is a little bit off the motorway with no facilities. Interestingly, now it's put a Tesla supercharger in, which I wasn't expecting and uh, finally onto our hotel. But as you can see there on the charge plan, it wants to go to 95% at Jura and then get to total with 21%. I'm more comfortable getting to total with down at 10%, uh, which would mean I don't have to do that slow charge up to 95. I can only charge at 85, keep going at 100 kilowatts um, or more at 85% and save myself a little bit of charging time. Okay, first stop of our return journey. We are at um, Jura Services, so it's Ionity here. So we plugged in, charging up. Uh, been on the road about two and a half hours. Gone from 83% battery down to 25. Did actually go up to 85% battery and showing 99 miles per kilowatt hour, um, just as uh, we got down to the, uh, the motorway at Bonneville. Um, from here, not too sure about the next stop. We could have carried on here to a fast next station um, for another kind of 30 or 40 miles. And next one is showing us Troy's but we might switch that for a total uh, one on the motorway services because I know I only see Troy's is off the motorway and we're just going to be sat there with nothing to do. So I uh, might, uh, might use a different station. And from there, I'm not too sure between Reem Chamfleury or a Tesla supercharger. So uh, while we're stopped, I'm going to have a look and kind of work out the plan. Uh, but I know I'll never run out of battery because the sand is taking care of things. Um, going to be a long one because we're up to Arras, so I won't be up there till midnight. Okay, getting a bit hungry. Um, so we plugged in now for our second stop. The last one was 26 minutes. Um, this is total, these are 175 kilowatt chargers. They're, um, they're a lot like the Ionity chargers I just used in terms of the touch screen and how they work. So I think they're made by the same people. Anyway, we're plugging in, uh, we're charging up. 
Uh, we're going to use the services here. I could have gone to Ionity Troy's down the road. That would have saved me a, a few pounds. Uh, but with no facilities there, this is the better option for tonight. Well, um, not the gastronomic experience of France that we were hoping for. Um, stood in motorway services eating a microwave pasta out of a, a bowl. Uh, but if we were at the Ionity down the road, there'd be no facilities at all. Um, there is a restaurant around the corner, but we wouldn't have had time to sit down and grab a proper meal there. Um, it's going to be gone midnight by the time we go up to the hotel near the tunnel. We're well over halfway. Next stop um, is going to be Tesla at San Quentin. Uh, so I'll have to use the Tesla app for that, although Audi is recommending I using it um, through, the, through, the, through the sound app. So we'll give that one a go. And then it's into the hotel. That should give us enough charge still to get all the way up to the tunnel. Uh, maybe the hotel will have a charger. Some websites say they do, some say they don't. So we'll just have to work it out. Okay, stop number three, and it's getting pretty late at night now. Um, we have done uh, a fair few miles. Uh, we've got 125 to go to the coast, and um, we're topping up here now at Tesla San Quentin. Uh, now, the first time I did this journey, if you look back at some of my older ski trip videos, uh, you'll see that uh, it's quite a long run from Chamfleury in uh, Reims all the way up to the coast, and there were very few charging options between the two. There's now a fresh mile station that I've come past already. I've got this Tesla station at San Quentin, and I believe there's a Fastned under construction a little bit further up. Southbound is easy. There's a couple of Ionities at Relay and uh, Boral, but I think on the other side of the carriageway, there were no Ionities, uh, but that's where one of the Fastneds is going in. Uh, so the northbound route has got better. So a uh, massive investment in, uh, in the infrastructure. And of course now with Tesla opening up their chargers to uh, non-Tesla traffic, that's really helping out so uh, things have gone really well for us so it'll be three stops to the channel I'm either going to fill up at the terminal or when we get across uh, tomorrow morning um, on the train because uh, we were in a hotel in Arras tonight um, when we get across tomorrow morning we'll pull into uh, the Ionity Channel Gateway um, if I can fill up at the hotel I might make it to Ionity Cobham so I've got a few options um, but certainly from here I want enough to get me to the uh, the channel and then to channel gateway ionity on the uh, on the english side uh, so good night's sleep at uh, ivy styles in arras um really nice hotel as well i do like the ivy styles chains uh, that's about 70 miles up to the tunnel so on the motorway now um be there one hour before our train um to go back through and uh, that top up at tesla will give us enough to get to channel gateway on the other side and that's if I don't have the opportunity to use any of the chargers that are at the terminal. Um, I'm not expecting to, I think we'll just get straight on the train and, and come through. Uh, this is about as busy as the tolls have got, uh, with just like a couple of cars in front. So it's, if you've got an adult with you in the passenger seat, it's pretty straightforward. Otherwise you can get a thing called a bip and go or some other kind of toll tags. Um, you can find them on the internet. And they're, uh, they're fairly straightforward to use, then you just drive through without having to, to do any payment. Um, the hard bit for me is uh, getting close enough uh, to the ticket machine uh, without scratching the alloys, but we've made it through. So, at the tunnel in about 25 minutes. Well, Channel Gateway, just ran into the terminal, got a box of goodies. Um, as you see, superchargers behind me, they're open to all traffic, and I'm plugged in on the NG, so quick stop on So just uh, a little summary then. Um, now I'm back at work and uh, just finishing off the video. So channel uh, terminal filled up to about 50%. Then the train uh, boarding came up on the screens. So we unplugged and uh, went through the tunnel. Uh, tunnel experience was very positive. Um, it does work well, but I do prefer the ferry. Uh, but the joy of the tunnel, if you are held up in traffic going up to the um, the tunnel if you're a couple of hours either side of your departure time that's not a problem they'll just stick you on the train without any issues if you're going for a ferry on the way back um, certainly Brittany ferries the ones that I use for the western ports into Portsmouth if you miss that by a few minutes you have missed it and chances are the next one is several hours away maybe even the next day so uh, the tunnel on the return does work quite nicely for us 
Uh, because I got a 50% charge at the terminal, that took me through to Cobham Ionity uh, on the M25. Had I not charged up there, I had other options. There was uh, Ionity Channel Gateway and Ionity Maidstone, uh, but we didn't need to use those. Uh, we went on to Ionity at Cobham. Cobham Services is very busy. I pulled in, I was expecting the charges to be quite busy, uh, but it said two occupied, two out of service and two available. Pulled onto one of the available ones and it was a bit of a queue and it was a bit chaotic there. Uh, to find the screen was blank, it wouldn't take my card. I did manage to start it through the app when it started up all the uh, all the displays on the charger were kind of flipped around 90 degrees and it was all going horizontal and, and not vertical and, and things were definitely wrong. And then I only got a charge speed of about 83 kilowatt hours. So not, uh, not too great an experience uh, compared to France. But nevertheless, didn't take as long to top up and then it was uh, home for us just outside Bournemouth. Total cost, uh, the tunnel cost me 200 pounds. The ferry was 320. Uh, that hotel in Arras was £100. I do like Ibis Styles, strongly recommend it for family travel. Uh, their family rooms are great and you normally get a free breakfast as well. So that is my go-to hotel chain in France. Um, just looking on the Audi account, charging the whole thing, um, €101 Euros was my total charge cost. Um, now normally with uh, these cards, I on the pro level, you get a cheap uh, rate at Ionity. Uh, but actually the cheapest charge was that Total Energies uh, because in France, uh, on the DC chargers and some of the fast chargers, uh, you pay per minute at Ionity, you pay per kilowatt hour. And it just happened to work out with that e-tron that uh, that big charger total, that only cost me 11 euros. Most of the other chargers were around 20. So something like 1,100 miles in France, a uh, total cost of 101 euros. So uh, not too bad at all. Tolls, 70 each way. Uh, what did impress me is how much uh, infrastructure is there for charging. Uh, the number of service stations that we went past, you could just see banks of chargers, all empty, all available, all with the lights on, even more with fences around them under construction. Uh, traveling in France is brilliant. Uh, the UK really needs to step up. Um, we need to go a lot better than having two or three grid serves on the motorway service areas. We need to do what uh, France is doing. You need eight chargers, 150, 250, 350 kilowatt hour charging capacity. So one last thing to show you um, from arrival back at home, that is the car loaded up. There are three pairs of skis, three wine boxes, luggage for four people. Um, there are three pairs of ski boots and a pair of ice skates underneath the boot floor. There's no spare wheel on mine. I've got the sealant pack instead. Uh, my criteria for choosing an electric car, it had to um, be able to get the skis in the car. That way I'm not faffing around with uh, roof boxes and roof racks. That leads to uh, aerodynamic inefficiencies. That hits your range. Didn't need to do that. The e-tron charges fast. You can get stuff in it. It is a terrific car and super comfortable on a long journey. So thank you for watching and uh, please like and subscribe. Um, my kids tell me that I have to say that at the end of every YouTube video. Um, apparently it's a bit of a thing. But to every one of you who watches these videos and uh, pops things in the comments, um, I do really appreciate it. Um, I try and keep things kind of factual. Um, I'm not trying to make a kind of comedy channel or anything like that. Um, but I just want to be informative. And uh, those of you that uh, watch it, I do hope that you find the videos uh, kind of good source of information. And maybe it'll just give you a bit of uh, confidence about taking your own electric car uh, down to the mountains or on a, on a summer trip uh, across uh, the channel to France. So uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, there'll be more content coming in the near future.